All right, guys. Welcome yes. back. Yes. Fresh yes. off fashion week, they are. Still, yes. still in fashion week. Every week is fashion week. <laughs> still Every in week fashion, week. fashion week. Stay tuned. Um, yeah. Market Mondays. The return yes. of Market Mondays. We are back. A uh, lot to talk about for sure. So I want to get into it. I don't want to drag out the intro for yeah. too long. Well, we got to first acknowledge today's date. It's well, September 11th. I, yeah, I was going to do that. Yeah. Um, so, we, I mean, we. I don't want to go too far without doing that. So first, let's just pay homage to the lives that were lost on this date yeah. here in New York and throughout uh, the country. And it, also the lives that were lost since then, because a lot of people have suffered from the effects um, of being down in ground zero. So condolences yeah. and thoughts and prayers to all families affected and everybody affected. Yes. 22 years ago. Yeah. That's insane. Crazy. Were you in New York that day? I was in Massachusetts. I was in uh, prep school in Massachusetts. And uh, it, I remember it was, it was hot. It was a heat wave. And it was like 90 degrees. And they told us that uh, the planes had hit the world trade. I didn't really understand. Like, you know, I didn't fully get it being away. I didn't fully understand exactly what, what was happening. Yeah. Um, but I came back to New York. You know, New York City actually has never been the same since 9-11. Um, you know, now you got the armed guard at uh, train stations. And it's just everything surveillance, everything. Yeah. Like, it's, it's really never actually have ever has ever been the same. So um, definitely a, a, a moment in history yeah. for sure. And yeah. Um, I was, yeah, I think I was in a, a I was thinking because I, I was, I remember seeing the first tower get hit by a plane. I was actually watching the Today Show. I think Matt Lauer was on right, right before I was Yeah, I think school. so. Yeah. And then um, on Channel 7, they had, they had reported as well. And then I went to school. I was driving uh, to Mercy College at the time. And um, I'm thinking to myself, this is crazy, but they, they still have in school. Yeah, and so when we got to Mercy, I got a text from my brother. He said, "Yo, the towers fell," and I kind of stopped driving because I didn't even know what he meant. I'm like, "What do you mean it fell?" He's like, "It's no longer there," and then automatically, I'm like, "This is this is bigger than what we thought it was." But my dad had worked in the city at the time, yeah. And so the next thought is like, "Let's hope that and pray that everybody makes it back safely." But if you're in Dodge Ferry, it's kind of like on the Hudson River, so you can see down to to the city, and so you could just see the cloud of smoke. Um, and just that day, you just. I mean, just watching it and being glued to it and understanding that the the magnitude of it was was crazy. But I remember waking up the next day, like praying that that wasn't real. Yeah, like it, that, it felt like a dream. Almost. Yeah, like that didn't just happen. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then you turn on the news and it actually did. Um, so yeah, yeah it's, it's it's a tough time in New York City. Any September 11th is tough. So again, thoughts and prayers to everybody affected. Yeah, I remember I was at Indiana University. Uh, saw same thing. Saw Matt Lauer, and I was like, oh, okay, that's crazy i thought it was just like a commercial driver or something like hit a plane because you never hear even being in city limits um but i remember when that second one hit everyone at iu who was from jersey new york just like crying because they had family members who worked in those towers i was like i was befuddled like i called my dad like what the hell is going on he was like i have no clue but he's like this is going to change the world forever and yeah, 22 years later, God rest all those who lost their lives, all uh, the emergency crew members who tried to rescue people. Um, it was it was a heartbreaking experience. I like I'm when our grandparents like talk, great grandparents talk about Pearl Harbor. Like this felt like our generation's version of that. Mm -hmm. So yeah, blessings to uh, and rest in peace to everyone who families were affected by that tragedy. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Um, on a lighter note, earn your leisure big week we have talk to us man i'm hyped for sure for sure so we first we got a dope episode coming out tomorrow chris and jadeen simon they were actually at invest fest so mm -hmm. this is a couple out of baltimore that okay. has a mental health business they have a chain of mental health facilities and um they've actually been able to do very well for themselves while actually doing well for the community as well so they that we talked to them about how they actually got into that space um the business model behind it. They work with schools. They work with, um, you know, adults. They work with companies. And it's it's very interesting um, business. But they have a, a couple other businesses that they have as well. But um, it's extremely interesting, especially when you look at, we talk about healthcare system a lot. Um, and, you know, people being, you know, having diabetes and different things in nature as far as physical ailments. But one of the biggest things in the healthcare system is mental health. And unfortunately, it's, it's a problem that seems like it's, it's only getting worse um, for adults and for children. So, yeah, it's unfortunate mm -hmm. for sure. Mm 
um, but it's also a, a business as well, right? And um, whether it's on the pharmaceutical side, you see Adderall being, you know, given at high levels to kids, yeah. and ADHD, different things of that nature, and depression medication and stuff like that, and all kinds of different drugs. Um, but also on the treatment side, as far as you know, psychologists and um, you know, therapy and different things of that nature, all of that stuff costs money. Somebody's paying for it. Either you're paying for it out of your pocket or the insurance is paying for it, state's paying for it. So, you know, they broke down their model, how they get paid from the government, how they get paid from insurance, and how to, you know, it's very interesting. Mm -hmm. Very, very lucrative. Um, that's an extremely lucrative space. So I would encourage everybody to 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 tune into that for a variety of different reasons. But um, and yeah, they had a dope panel at InvestFest them. Um they had uh David Banner. Yep. And a few other people um, on that panel. So that was that was a dope one. So that's tomorrow at one o'clock. Tap in. And um this Wednesday at 12 o'clock Eastern. Come on with it. Breaking news alert, alert, new show alert, yeah. new show alert, new show. So shout out to Fahim and shout out to Mike. Um, so they have a real estate investment company called Oasis. Um, and the good brothers are from LA. Fahim is actually the head of Diddy Security. So it all works in alignment. So Fahim is the head of Diddy Security. Um, and he, uh, him and Mike, they kind of know each other from LA. They started an investment company called Oasis and they actually pitched the idea to us and we heard about it and we just thought it was a great idea. So the show is going to be a show where they go, it's a travel show and they're going to be going to different cities all across America and with the objection, with the object of, of buying back the block. So they're going to go and they're going to, you know, Meet the, the locals in in the city. They're gonna learn about the locals in the city. They're gonna learn about you know historical landmarks, different things that nature. They're gonna see the opportunity. So imagine like you know, you watch all these travel shows like you know, rest in peace, Anthony Bourdain, and different things that nature. Yeah. But this is really dope because you know you get to see different places. I know they went to Little Haiti mm -hmm. in Miami. They went to Chicago, um, Brooklyn, Mount Vernon, New York. Like yeah. they were going all over, all over America. Very well produced show. Yes. Um, and it encompasses a few different things. You learn about financial literacy, obviously, on the real estate investment side, but you also get to see different areas that you might not have ever been to. So that's 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 what's really great about these travel shows. That you get to. So this is this is the first show that we've ever put out of its of sort. Um, as I said, very highly produced show, travel show. So just expanding our portfolio as a media company. So that that comes out on our YouTube channel and all podcast outlets. And shout out to them. Um, you know, definitely, you know, big. And we're definitely looking forward to, you know, putting that out. And I think that that's something that's yeah. going to change the game for sure. Tell, tell them the time, indeed. I did. 12 o'clock on Wednesday. All right, tell, them, <laughs> tell them again. So, <laughs> listen, I, I, I'm going to tell them. When I saw the trailer, I was like, wait, 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 what is this? <laughs> Zoom in, panning. I'm like, this is fire. And I'll see y'all putting together your own index. Ah, properties. Yeah, uh, man. It's okay. That Vanguard of media. I'll see you. <laughs> yeah, I'll man. See the vision. Them brothers are incredible. Um, yeah. just just stand up guys. We actually uh did some work with them in Chicago. We, you know, they had a, an event and we were able to be a part of it. And their mission is very simple. They want to reclaim, redevelop, and rebuild communities. And so we get to witness that firsthand. I think that's the beauty of it, right? So you never know. It could be your community, right? Most people look at their community, they don't realize the value that it has. They don't realize the brilliance that's inside of it. So sometimes it takes for people to come in to show you the brilliance that exists there for you to really understand the magnitude of what you have. So that's what the, the plan is. And we're super excited to have them on EYL Network. Uh, welcome to the family, fellas. For sure. For sure. Yeah, that's amazing. All right, Ian, any announcements on your end? Yes. Uh, Stock Club Call will be this Wednesday at 9 p.m. Central. Last week was absolutely amazing. Um, I walked through if you are a beginning investor, how to select your own target. So I will never give up my crystal ball. But if if I gave the base of the crystal ball, shout out to my guy, Fijian. We went through that. That was an amazing call. If you guys want to join Stock Club, um, you can go to joinredpanda.com and join. It's only $4.99 a month. I heard all of the talk last year about it being too much. So I'm going to test it out for $4.99 for another month, and then the price will go back up. Um, so I don't want to hear nothing when this price goes back up about I look out price wise. So, um, and if I've made you money, please put yes in chat. That's the most important thing when we have in these investing combos is that you're actually making money. Yes. And um, Market Monday's World Tour, we have yes. two stops left Chicago, mm. uh, October 22nd. Chicago tickets are selling fast. So, 
Get your ticket to Market Monday's World Tour. The, the in-person experience is completely different than a virtual experience. So yes. this is this is a great opportunity to network and meet people and you know just get a ton of information. Like this is really a real informational session that we put together with these world tours. So Market Monday's World Tour, Chicago, October 22nd. Click the link on our website, our bio on the website, and get your tickets. Yes. And then Ghana will be in Ghana Can't on December wait. 27th. We will be in Ghana. Uh, last show of the year. So, um, but yeah, we'll see, you. We'll, see you. we'll see you there. Go to is two words, my brother. <laughs> um, <laughs> shout, shout, shout out to the good folks at Ally, uh, the sponsor uh, of that, of the tour. Shout out to them. Shout out to Ally. Yeah. And shout out to our good producer, Michael. <laughs> I appreciate yes. you. I mean, the way he's able to adjust is incredible. Yeah. Yes. Like like Shador did this past weekend. Shout it's out to the, about how you start the game, the about how you finish. Yes. Congratulations. Congrats to the bus and big, big congrats to the U.S. Open champion, Coco Golf, the 19-year-old yes. phenom. That's incredible. Congrats to her and the fam. Incredible. She done it. She did it in uh, gracious fashion. Uh, and her speech afterwards was incredible as well. Shout out to Coco Golf and her whole team. And congratulations to my boy Diddy on the Lifetime Achievement Award yes. uh, tomorrow Icon. at the MTV Awards. Um, you yeah. might see us there. Perhaps. You, you might. It's a per possibility. Perhaps. No, perhaps. No, 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 I don't want. No, I don't want anybody to get. Perhaps. What time should they tune in? <laughs> I don't want to get any. You score hit head. different when you show up on the VMAs, ain't it? Perhaps. It's a perhaps. Key rating. Uh, some of y'all on the clock. I'm gonna say it. Hey, some of y'all who didn't put your best foot forward this year, you on the clock. Uh, but no, right. shout out to Diddy, man. Congratulations. That's big lifetime achievement icon award, whatever they call it. But yeah, you no, know, it's for the for the life of his career. So his album comes out Friday. The Love LP. Get that. Um, and then we'll be in Charlotte, North Carolina this 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 weekend. Yes. We'll be in your area, Charlotte. So let us know where to eat at. Let us know what the vibes are. We got an event. I don't know. I we maybe we can get the information for the event later on. But mm -hmm. first time ever in Charlotte. So we're looking forward to that. We'll be there Friday and Saturday. So Charlotte, North Carolina, man. Yeah. <laughs> Brings right, up. To, to my guy Orlando, uh, who manages Jacquees. And Jacquees is on that love album. So congrats to him. Oh, you made the okay, nice. Yeah, nice. Made nice. Shout out to King R and B. King of R and B. <laughs> That's my guy. Boy, you're doing too much. Uh, 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 <laughs> disclaimer. Uh, yeah, man. Our content is intended to be used and must be used for informational purposes only. It's very important to do your own analysis before making any investment based on your own personal circumstances. You should take independent financial advice from a professional in connection with or independently research and verify in any information that you find on our show and wish to rely upon, whether for the purpose of making an investment decision or otherwise. This is a message brought to you by the good brothers at Earn Your Leisure yes. and the good brother Ian Dunlap, the master investor himself. Please continue to do your research and when it's great, share it and when it's even better than great it's phenomenal pay homage to the person you got it from that's how we yes. spread love that's how we build community all right so let's start this off with apple yeah the, the number one talked it's about a, stock on market monday it's a big week so apple has lost 200 billion well last week yeah, last week last it lost week. 200 yeah. billion yeah. in two days after reports of iphone ban in china so in a significant turn down downturn, Apple's market value was dis, decimated by 200 billion in the span of two days. This decline is connected to the emerging reports surrounding a potential ban of iPhone sales in China, a critical market for the tech giant. The news is evidently caused unrest among investors, resulting in a sell off. Mm -hmm. That negatively impacted Apple stock value last week, for sure. Um, while the ramifications of such ban are not clear at the moment, the market reaction reflects concerns over the sustainable role of the Chinese play in Apple's revenue stream. So yeah. this is something that is extremely concerning for the tech industry and Apple um, and Apple shareholders. So what does this mean? Uh it's pretty interesting, right? A company loses two hundred billion, and it doesn't feel like this is the end of the world. It doesn't even feel like this is like super major. I think the 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 bigger part of the issue is what the Chinese government has done, mm -hmm. because I think that speaks higher volumes. And so the agency they they are telling pretty much their citizens to refrain from using Apple iPhones and other foreign based brands for work 
or bringing them into the office as part of a broader effort to reduce the reliance on foreign technology. I think that's the piece that is interesting, right? They're trying to make sure that their citizens don't use foreign technology. So Apple, of course, is part of that. I think that's the bigger play. The 200 billion, yes, there's nothing to sneeze at, but for a company like Apple, I'm not sure how much of a detriment it is. Now, if that ban stays in place, that's gonna affect a lot of companies and a lot of businesses, Apple being one. But the other side of it is that while they're telling you to not use the iPhone and they're trying to ban the use of it in the workplace, they've announced the new Huawei phone. (laughs) (laughs) What do you know? (laughs) This is, I mean, the timing of this is impeccable, right? You you, you, you put the ban in place on Thursday, you announce a Chinese manufacturer Huawei, which is probably the biggest tech, phone tech company in China, they announced their new phone that's coming out, the Mate uh, 60 Pro smartphone. And so you talk about all the great features that it has, you want them to stop relying on foreign based technology. Well, Mm -hmm. here comes our technology. I mean, from a standpoint of media and and spreading propaganda, the sales of of the Huawei phone were great. And part of it had to do with the announcement of, hey, we want you to stop using that that American phone. Huawei spelled with an H. Yes. 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 H H U A W E E I. Correct. Yes. Um, I don't want to sneeze at a two hundred billion dollar loss, but for context, this is like a Lucid Motors or a Snapchat. I want everyone right now in chat to go Google what is the annual revenue of AirPods. So even if this band does last for a little bit longer, uh, when when the AirPods are producing more revenue than Adobe. I'm not as worried. The part that, that does has me concerned is that China is starting to counteract some of the things that we were doing. So when we blocked Huawei last year, mm-hmm. it two, is two years right. ago or two years ago. Yeah, it's right on the enterprise side and on the government side that they block our iPhones. But an Apple's chess move, I was telling someone this, I think, on your post. Um, this is why Apple has slowly built a regime in manufacturing in India. And it may take three years for it, that to be fully in swing. But when war benefits nobody but armament dealers, but if you are going to go to war, you're going to have to know who your allies are and where you're going to be able to replace that revenue. They're either going to be able to replace that revenue in India. Um, the third point I want to make, this is really just, yes, it factored in, but it wasn't the catalyst that caused it to fall. When Apple hit a high a couple months ago, 194.50, and it retested last week of 189 and some change, the market is just like everything is like 95% to 97% off of its highs. We're just seeing a pullback overall, and there's a lot of geopolitical concern that we have. Even with the ARM IPO, which we'll talk about later, mm-hmm. the biggest issue that I have there is that the exposure to China. Same with Taiwan Semiconductor, we'll talk about later. The only reason I haven't liked them more than NVIDIA, and NVIDIA was the greatest benefactor there, is because of the exposure and potential war with China. If that was not there, TSM would have probably been up 500% this year. So in a grand scheme of things, am I worried about a $200 billion loss in Apple when they find a way to charge your card in the middle of the night for all those services that you get out the App Store? No. Uh, The AirPod revenue is there, but I do think we have to find ways to be able to get along with the superpowers that are China, India, which does not care about globalism as much as we do, and a couple other emerging markets as well, uh, especially the supercontinent of Africa. We have to have good geopolitical tact there in order for business to continue to thrive. For everyone who's asking, is this the time to get out of Apple? I'll buy all your shares off you. No, now is not the time. Yeah, I mean, so we saw it with, we're seeing it now with Apple, but if you think back earlier in the year when America government said that they told NVIDIA, hey, we got to slow down on the sales of our chips to China, the Chinese population because we don't want them getting technologically advanced. So you yeah. think about that. That's part of it as well. And so even inside of the Huawei phone, they're not using NVIDIA chips. They're using chips that are made specifically, semis that are made uh, from Chinese companies. Yep. So you're starting to see like these geopolitical issues spill into the companies that we know very well. You can't invest in, in Huawei. It's not a public traded stock, right? Uh, not, not a, no market. I don't think we can. No. no it's we not. Can. No. So for anybody that's interested in learning more about that company, you want to give them any more insight on that? Huawei, the company, the, the Apple of China, pretty much. That would be the easiest like tagline, if you will. 
for them. Well-designed phones, maybe even has an edge on Apple. If Samsung had a sister company in terms of like technological innovation, Huawei would be it. But this is chess and war games now through tech. We've talked about it before. These wars are not going to be fought with boots on the ground. It's going to be fought with AI intelligence mm -hmm. and programming a nation how to feel about something. And the truth is, it was a mistake for long ago for America to ship all of its jobs over to India and China while not telling African Americans and brown people there are no jobs available for you. Now you've built up a superpower who wants to come and destroy you when you could have taken care of your own. To every economist, they cannot tell me that it is better fit for the economy to outsource jobs to another country that does not pay taxes here opposed to taking care of its own people. Majority of the brands that are going through a lot of drama right now and trauma did not take care of their Adam, excuse me, did not take care of the African-American community like Adam 22. I'm sorry <laughs> for whatever you were going through last week. I'll see you in a couple of weeks. But we need to start having an index on companies that actually treat us well because it's starting to have an economic impact on the bottom line. Are you going to actually see Adam 22? Yeah, he had a little issue last week. He had a little uh, PR issue. So I'm going to go see him in two weeks. See him for what? You're doing a show? Yeah, I'm doing an interview. Okay. Shout out to Flacco. Y'all want to call? <laughs> pause. <laughs> Big pause. Especially <laughs> on that show. <laughs> and don't have Lena on set. It ain't that type of show. <laughs> it's not that type of show. Shout out to your queen and all that, but no. Shout out to your queen. <laughs> um, okay. So is uh this an opportunity to buy Apple stock? Um, I believe so. Not at this price. I like it. Uh, Stock Club Flip, don't kill me. If, if it gets to like 171 or 163, I like it at the area. But um, no one that is an investor long term, even though it's a boring company, quote unquote, we talk about it all the time. No one can name me nine better companies than Apple internationally or domestically. Once again, put in chat, what is the revenue of AirPod. My number one thing that filter for everyone who asks me about a company is your company making more revenue than AirPods. So that's the word. Many. That's the wearable section, y'all. Yeah, it's <laughs> like when you go to that wearable section and regardless yeah. of what the operating expenses are, they are making a killing billion off of AirPods alone. More than Adobe, they're out doing Snapchat. So, like all the the fringe brands that were doing good in 2020. In 2021, then are no longer doing good. Once again, I'll say it, it's a noble concept. The company that makes the most money, that has the best profit margin, should be the most heralded publicly traded company of all time. And it should make you money. So yeah. Um, you know what? We we should also pay attention, right? Like, yes, it's the 200 billion. But last quarter, we in the past two quarters, we have seen a decline in the sales of the iPhone, which we we should take mm -hmm. note of. Like we've seen that. That has happened. The number one leader as far as the ecosystem inside of Apple is the iPhone. Over 50% of its revenue comes from that. Yeah. Tomorrow's a huge day. Like, we can't over, like, look that. Tomorrow's a huge day. Tomorrow they're going to be announcing the innovation, right? Whether it's the iPhone 15 Pro or, or Pro Max. The, I know there's some new watches, and maybe they'll have a new iPad. Let's see what the innovation looks like, because yeah. three to four quarters of negative sales on the iphone it's gonna it'll affect the, the company i mean it's impossible for it not to so let's just be mindful of that i agree i'm not being flipping on it i mean as far as the innovation i'm gonna call a cap on that i don't think the 15 gonna be too innovative i haven't heard anybody say anything of any features that i haven't I'm, seen where are the leaks i haven't even seen any leaks <laughs> <laughs> listen <laughs> when, when nobody's leaking the album that's when you know the album trash yeah, they got the event tomorrow. Wonderlust, I think it's, I believe it's called. Um, yeah. That's the release of the iPhone 15. Are oh, they going to talk about it? So you're not excited? You're not excited? You don't think that's going to move the stock at all? No, I I would be lying if I. It's not a, regardless yeah. of my love for Apple, I'm always going to be honest. I have. I don't think it's going to be that much different than the 14. Yeah. Well, and Apple, it, better camera, slightly better camera. So. Yeah. Yeah. Usually they'll start releasing. I mean, probably at the end of September, we'll, we'll probably hear more about it. The pre-sale numbers or the pre-sale orders. And that'll give you a fair indication that'll go into Q, Q4 sales. Yeah. Uh, but I haven't heard any. Like you said, I haven't even seen any leaks that, oh, this is the new feature. Or no rumblings. There hasn't been any rumbling. So. I mean, they need a whole new. It's like putting out the same pair of Jordans every year yep. with a different, different colorway. Yep. Eventually, you, it's just doesn't mean anything anymore like they probably have to just revolutionize their whole thing and come up with a whole completely new product because 
it's not really moving a needle. It's just the same thing over and over again. Yeah, people Apple, gonna buy it. You, you gotta, gotta buy it. You, you, have have no you have no choice but to buy it. But people are holding on to their phones longer, though, right? So like the person, like you might have the thirteen, I might have the fourteen. People are looking at the fifteen and saying, "I'm not buying that. I'm I'm loyal to the phone that I have. It's pretty good. The camera's not gonna be that much better." Yeah. So I mean, you're you're right. There needs to be something that's innovative. I just don't think this is gonna be the one, which could be an indicator that shows slower sales again in uh, the iPhone. Two things. Um, Apple corporate needs to bring Johnny Ive back or someone of his stature to begin to design, design products because from an operation standpoint, you can only enhance profit margin price points so much. You have to, at some point, please write this in chat, you have to have an irresistible offer that nobody can deny. Like regardless of what people think about, did he give away a million? It's like a million is a million bucks. That's amazing. That is newsworthy. Um, iPhone has not had a significant upgrade in a long, maybe five or six years. It is time. Got to bring some key people back. I think Johnny Ivor, I know he's still in this consultant role, but they need to find a way to integrate him back and begin to focus a lot more on innovation. Wearables is doing great, but they still need um, a lot more development on our product side before they eventually get into healthcare. Um, yeah. And the Vision Pro doesn't is until next year. I think pre-orders might be starting this year though, but it, it doesn't come out till next year. Yep. If you had if you had um see you tired, see it, it ain't even rolled out yet, and you tired. <laughs> <laughs> if you had one stock to invest in, given all factors included, um, and you can only invest in one stock mm -hmm. over the next 10 years. I like what I'm gonna have that list of Diddy this week too. Go what, ahead. What what stock would you invest in? I'm gonna go and it could be in, that stock could be an index, it could be an ETF, it could be an individual stock. Just starting from today going forward or earlier this year? Today going forward. Eli Lilly. Eli Lilly, why? Hands down. Um, I, I actually want to put this as a topic. Is uh I think Eli Lilly's been slept on for the longest period of time. Just think if like Tesla actually owned Eli Lilly, what the multiple of that would be. I think Eli Lilly's trading at uh, excuse me, uh Tesla's trading at like 27 or 50 times sales something ridiculous right you have to factor in a they have uh an amazing management team the drugs are flying off the shelf the profit margins are incredibly strong and they've been on a consistent run for like 10 or 15 years they're like the drake of the pharmaceutical industry like regardless of what you feel about it you may not like his little you know playa album with the vibes and, and santorini but he but like eli, eli Lilly consistently outperforms and I think now they may be like in 10th place. Um, so if I had to bet, if we're going into a recession and they actually announce it, which they won't, but I am also concerned going into this political environment, what health risk or health scare will come up to suppress votes later next year. Pharma companies and oil and gas companies in a recession normally do incredibly well because the margins are so wide. Because if you own a drug, you, you normally have a 20 year window where you can mark the product up as much as you want. In tech, you may have 3X, 5X, maximum 10X. Some prescriptions have a 27X, 47X markup on them. It's kind of hard to lose money. So if, I, if I'm, we're going into a recession or even like an economic pullback, I'm definitely gonna lean on pharma. What would you invest in? Uh, <laughs> I'm gonna go Amazon still. I'm still gonna go Amazon just because the amount of verticals is crazy. Because I'm looking at it right now. When you talk about the ecosystem that is Amazon, you're, you're touching all cylinders. Healthcare, they'll have, they have, and they're uh -huh. building on. Uh, media, they have, and they're building on. Retail, they have, and they're building on. But most importantly, cloud, they have, and they're building on. Um, so when you take out all these verticals, if you had to make a super company, this would be it. Um, mm -hmm. Apple, obviously, that would probably be the obvious choice. I think people would think that, but some of those concerns, right? If there isn't any innovation, if that is a continuous cycle and phones look different and they're so far ahead now, but what does that look like in 10, 15 years? Mm -hmm. I just think that Amazon's ecosystem is built for, I mean, Apple is too, but I just think the ecosystem that is Amazon and all the verticals that they have, it's tough for me not to go with them. Sean, what about you? Well, I think that um, defense is always the best offense. Yep. And you have to, 
considering all factors, right? So it's like the safest thing to say would be to invest in the S and P 500 for 10 years. Right. But yep. that's probably not going to outperform market. Then you can say, okay, do an individual stock, Apple, Microsoft, Eli Lilly, Google, Amazon. Yep. There's risk. There's always risk. You always anything, risk. anything can happen. So I think the best of both worlds is QQQ. I just, you know, when you look at the risk reward ratio, yeah. If you have if you have a holdings of Apple, Microsoft, Amazon, Nvidia, Meta, Apple, Apple, uh, Google, Google, and Tesla, Broadcom, and Adobe. I just feel like, you know, it's a safest bet with the uh, high probability of outperforming the mm -hmm. S&P 500 in a general stock market was still downside protection because you're not putting all your eggs in one basket and it can be, you know, adjusted over the course of time as stocks. But I just feel like tech is, is, has led obviously, but will continue to lead, especially artificial intelligence, different things of that nature. So the technology sector, which is kind of broad range because technology is a very broad range sector, but, mm -hmm. um, I just feel like that's the safest way to go while still getting real returns. Like you can 10 years, you might be up 150%, 200%. Yeah. Like that's realistic, right? With S and P you might be up 30%, 40%. Like you still not bad, but you probably would have now you probably could be up a thousand percent if NVIDIA goes crazy, but it's a risk. Yeah. It's a, it's a risk. So for the risk reward ratio to me, I think that that's the the safest play to get the best of both worlds. We all got tech companies. How long is the time? Is it for the rest of our life, or is it for a time period? Ten years. Ten years. Because I, I mean, I just feel like you brought up Nvidia, and that was the first thing I was thinking. Because I know the next three to five years are going to be incredible, just because they're so far ahead when we're talking about semiconductors and the growth potential and the reliance that people are going to have on them. Um, when we talk about anything, when we're talking about the EV market and Tesla and how they're going to be needing the, the semis that that Nvidia are, are producing. I think the next three to five, if I had to take a short term, it's Nvidia. If I go ten to fifteen twenty, I might still take them, but they're close yeah, to They're going to have a lot, a lot more competition. Yeah, the, the competition is is building now. We just don't know who it is yet. Who will be the front runner? They're just so far ahead. Three to five years. I mean, it's going to be the same. Play, like Tesla, Microsoft, Meta. Um, even Meta starting to make a push uh, hey. to attack opening out. Like once Zuckerberg got in that dojo, <laughs> where is he? I'm sorry about your loss, but um, they've been incredibly focused. Google, it's going to be the because the biggest companies. Like think of all of these companies as kingdoms. The kingdoms with the most amount of capital or capital are going to acquire all the small players, especially as the startup environment is getting a lot tighter. So like. We'll talk about Instacart later, but like valuations are being cut like crazy. Startups are not having the same amount of capital. Um, even private equity is starting to stumble a little bit. Like the ones that have had cash on hand are the ones that are going to buy up all the small companies that have all the innovation and put them underneath their wing so that they, that they can continue to pr produce higher gains in the market. Like uh, investing is really a simple concept, like invest in the best companies. Yes, you may find an outlier that can dominate. Um, even when I called NVIDIA uh, last year is one of my stocks of the year. Like I've been in NVIDIA four years already, already having the AMD. Um, there aren't many new players in an environment where the interest rates are high and there's not a lot of money flowing around that you're going to be able to like just grow your way to innovation and pass up Google or Microsoft or Adobe or Cisco or Costco. It's damn near impossible. The game is designed to do that. And a lot of times as investors, we stray from what works because we're chasing excitement. Put it in chat. We're here to get rich. All that talking. That's why I love to see the people like who come to Invest Fest and Market Mondays who have executed and be like, bro, I started with 10 grand and now I'm up 115,000. I'm up 200,000. The ones who didn't listen, sorry. I'm sorry. Should have listened. Microsoft, AMD, NVIDIA. But if we, we go to Eli Lilly, um, return invested on capital 29.9%. The beta of the stock is 0.5%. So it's lower risk. In it, uh, most analysts have it as a buy, which is absolutely amazing. 
enterprise of sales value is 15x and the market is normally 3.6 in comparison um and if we go back over the last five years the stock went from 123 dollars currently surging at 586 um Yes, it'll pull back at some point, but if you hold for the next 10 years, if you think America's uh, Americans consumers are going to get healthier, got another thing coming for you. They're not. And if they split, oh my God, they do a five to one split, then what? Five, five, ninety, five, ninety six, five, five, ninety six. Yeah. Game set match. Yeah. yeah. Another thing, another, another one along the lines of QQQ, which is a little bit more, probably a little bit more risk involved, but same concept is uh, SMH. Uh, once again, anything can happen. One thing I learned early on is that you never put all your chips in one basket. A sure, a sure, a sure win is a sure win until you lose. So um, it's just you, you, you always just have to be apprehensive about investing just in one company. Um, but like I said, I this AI thing is is going to be big. Like I said, Deion Sanders thing, that thing was going to be big. A new Colorado was going to going to win, and they're winning. Um, from every single person that we've spoken to and just real life application. Artificial intelligence is at the beginning stages. Stages. Of, of this, this thing is going to. It's like pre OL, AOL internet, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like, we haven't even bubbled yet. No, for sure. No. AI, AI is going to go crazy. And anybody that is involved in AI is going to benefit from it. So the chip companies. All of the chip chunk, NVIDIA, NVIDIA is the, the lead, and they look like they will continue to be in the lead. But anything can happen. They might not always be in the lead, but regardless, if they go crazy, all the other companies are going to do well as well. So I just feel like SMH is another one of those. Mm. What? They might uh -oh. not all do well. I'm saying all of them that. that Let's it, get to it. All of them that's in, in so SMH you have Nvidia you have well, uh, uh, Taiwan Semiconductor. What I'm saying is not like every single company. Right, right. So like no, no, Nvidia no. success is not going to help Intel to a certain extent. No, of, Intel's what? dead. <laughs> IBM's dead. Shout out to old boy who kept coming by IBM. Listen, this is what I wanted. Twenty twenty three. Every investment decision that you make has to be backed up with some dollars. Yo. It, Intel is such a trigger for you. Like every time I say it, that's the response. Dog, so, so, I get so tired. That's like me saying Yahoo gonna make a comeback. It's, shout out to Marissa. Shout out to IBM Intel. The shit's finito. You know what I'm saying? I'm telling you, Morta, it's over with. These are jokes written by 85 South DC. That's what I was trying to say, but go ahead. But go ahead, Rashad. I'm sorry. I mean, yeah. I mean, but it's the it's the ETF manager's job to make sure that the allocation is done responsibly, so that you know they get. Yes. So like right now, Nvidia is 20 percent of the fund. Um, Taiwan Semiconductor is 10 percent. Broadcom is 5 percent. Um, ASML is 4.8 percent. Love you them. Have Love them. Lamb yes. Research yes. Company. Yes. You have Texas Texas Instruments. Mm -hmm. You have Qualcomm. You have Intel, Qualcomm, big news. You have uh, yeah. applied materials. And you have uh, analog device. You don't have AMD. AMD's not in there anymore. Uh -uh. Not, not showing. Hmm. Not showing for me. Uh, <laughs> Twenty percent. I mean, that's interesting. I remember the days when Nvidia was six percent. Well, that's the good thing yeah. with, with ETFs. Right. Also, is yep. that they're flexible to change. So yeah, it's like all like, like game. Pop gonna put in the right player. Exactly. It's like a game. Yeah. You scoring, you scoring thirty points a game. You are gonna play more. You are gonna play stay in. <laughs> <laughs> if you start to, if you start to dwindle your production down, you are gonna become a six man yeah. coming off the bench. Yeah. So, um, all right. Well, there's some insight for you for you. Stop Hold for the long out. term. Investing is so easy if you continue to invest in the right companies and be and be consistent. AMD is four percent. Four percent. Yeah. Four percent. Yeah. Wow. I, th I think that, I think that should be a higher percentage, but yeah. I mean, you got to readjust next year. Twenty-one percent, nearly for Nvidia. That's interesting. I mean, they the leaders. Makes sense. No, it makes sense. So I mean, I mean, can you? Do <laughs> it's like XLK. I think Apple and Microsoft make up forty percent of XLK. Yeah. That that's well played. I'm seeing a lot of y'all managers too. Ah, y'all copied at the wrong time. Sorry, but yeah, what do yeah. I? Know? All right. Um. So Joe Biden states mm -hmm. that China has been changing the rules of the game on trade, but he wants to get the relations right with China. Is this a step in the right direction? 
I absolutely believe so. Um, uh, Rashad, I think you said this maybe two years ago, like no one really wins in war. Um, and when you're in war times with superpowers, it does not bode well. I think there's a way we can do business with China where we don't off outsource all of our jobs offshore. But we do have to have a friendly environment. We got to clean up the issue and should have prevented the issue that was going on in Ukraine. Um, we have to fix some things that have, has happened in Africa and in China. I think it's a, the right step. I think he's making the right step in terms of what to do before the election. But to be very honest, even the acquisition of China and having a b bunch of our bonds, them going through this illustrious boom that we kind of like went through in, a, in the, the dot-com era in terms of like their real estate crisis that they're going through is affecting us. It used to be when we, we got a cold, the rest of the world got a flu. Now it's like when China gets a cold, we're getting a flu as a result. So he's doing the right thing. But for all my investors, you have to know, write this in chat. You need a smooth geopolitical environment to be able to get rich from the stock market. If everyone's at war and God forbid, if World War Three happens and the sign, first sign of World War Three is if Ukraine gets put into NATO. Oh, my God. Just pack your bags and go hide in the Pacific Ocean. <laughs> but <laughs> I'm being real. Like if, if we see that happen, oh, it's going to be hell on earth. But you need a smooth geopolitical environment to be able to make a lot of money when the market has done the best normally everyone was getting along and there were trade agreements when you start to like leave these sanctions against countries and then they push back and find ways to upset you by saying hey we don't want anyone in our government or enterprise and uses iphones it's going to have an impact so you have to be able to get along to be able to be profitable all right it's bad for business yes all right all right. So this is a question from the audience. Um, yes. What would happen if China decided to cash in all of their current U.S. bonds and how would this impact the U.S. dollar? It's a great question. It's one of those questions that I don't think ever would happen. But if hypothetically it did, it would also have a negative impact on Japan as well. So it would levy our stock market. Um, it would have an impact on our dollar, but it will have an impact as well on a trade agreements and how they offset losses from importing and exporting as well. So like, it's kind of like a mutually assured destruction. There's no really real incentive for China to do that at this moment. Even if they're upset at us, you can't just flood the market with bonds that no one at this point wants to buy. I can see if there was a buyer and even with bricks, with them trying to form an alliance, if they're going to sell off our debt, I don't see anyone in bricks acquiring all of that debt to help China when they're forming their own alliance. So it's kind of like uh, an argument, like what if all the gold on earth disappeared or, or if every dollar disappeared on earth and we went all digital. Um, sometimes we have to prepare for the worst case scenario, but there is like a poison pill inside of this. If China does end up letting um, all of our bonds on the open market, and they won't have enough buyers for them. Will it have an impact on the dollar? The dollar's been dying since we got off the gold reserve, uh, the gold standard, excuse me. Um, so that would that would not be the death of it per se. Um, inflation, I think, in quantitative easing has done more destruction to our dollar, more so than China letting the bonds on the market ever could. Okay. Okay. So shares of Alibaba fell 3% after the outgoing CEO unexpectedly quit Mm -hmm. cloud business um what impact will this have on the stock market and overall economy um try i'd love to get your insight on this but when i saw this yeah. my first thought was when someone leaves a mega power and we can argue pound for pound alibaba may be better than amazon for him to just walk away this is not a good sign it tells me that something is coming down the line in the next couple of years, kind of like when in 2020 we saw a bunch of CEOs starting to leave. It tells me that things in China are not going to get better anytime soon. We may have like a three <laughs> year where things are really rough. Like if all of a sudden, if like Rob Palinka just left and certain people that are key play, like if Dion left Colorado tomorrow, I'm like, whoo, what happened? It's the same kind of impact. Um, yeah. And meanwhile, China is like the major linchpin. And this investment environment, like they are for all my investors and traders, think of China as a market maker and every company inside of China that are big players. If they start to walk away, they'll never tell the real reason because they can't. But that is a sign of distress. 
Yeah, I think you're, you're spot on with the distress. It's like yeah. it's a distress signal. First, he was the CEO and chairman. He stepped down. His initial plan was to be the head of the Ali Cloud. Uh, and he stepped down from that. So yes. that that just happened like out of nowhere, right? Because yes. it was like, all right, I'm going to take a lesser position. But he's even now left a lesser position. So in March, and this is why I say it's a sign of distress. In March, Alibaba split into six businesses, which got me thinking about some U.S. companies that sure if they split into six businesses i know you brought up the wearables and just yeah. what they would do but the reason they split up was they wanted to have them have a clear path to raise outside funding and take those individual businesses public mm -hmm. when i hear raising funds when i hear division and create that tells me that we're trying to get more income because what mm -hmm. we're doing now is not sufficient enough as a company um, yeah. and so him leaving number one puts that in jeopardy right because when yeah. you talk about companies and why people want to invest in them and they want to be a part of it. The first thing that we look at is leadership. Uh -huh. And if this company is preparing to go public, and I'm speaking of Ali Cloud, because that's one of the six divisions, they don't have a leader right now. How do you pitch this now to potential investors? So it doesn't help. And it also doesn't help the five other divisions of Alibaba. Um, but it's, a, it's an interesting concept. It's, yeah. Uh, of, of saying we're going to, yes, we're one ecosystem like we spoke about earlier yeah saying, hey what if we created divisions and each division went public what could that do for the revenue of the, the company as a totality well, well when a government structure is a lot different than ours and there's a lot the, the focus in china is more so on real estate it's really tough like every other business i feel like jack ma tried to push they blocked so I think the same thing would happen here. I think it's a great idea to break them up into divisions. Like even if Google spun off YouTube, I think YouTube could be mm -hmm. powerhouse on the stock. Like that's a, that would be a game changer. It would destroy typical media. It would put a lot of pressure on Netflix and HBO Max and Disney. But I think the powers that be don't want that at this time until there is a like official change in the guard. And the same as in China. Like I feel like they've been thwarting the growth of a lot of these companies and let's be clear if Xi Jinping was not upset and Jack Ma didn't have to take a little vacation I think Alibaba would have been it's maybe four companies in China that I think would have been in that top seven that probably would have taken out some of the American stocks but when you have a regime that wants absolute control at all costs the this is the downside of it but also when you want the exuberance of America he it was just bad misjudgment i mean i know i talk a lot about biden's leadership but there's been a lot of mismanagement over the last four years in china of trying to control things too fast while trying to grow too fast and they just made some uh incredible mistakes um so until alibaba price goes up i don't see things in china being a lot better evergrande's already falling apart like i talked mm -hmm. about a couple years ago uh country gardens in trouble there's a couple other players that are in trouble so do your homework do your research but until alibaba i, I look at them as a linchpin the same way i would as apple in america's stock market in america's economy yeah there, there's similar characteristics to an amazon when you look at the divisions you got a media group yep. you have a digital commerce group a logistics group the the, the cloud group we just referenced and a service group so it, it has those foundations but like you said when you're dealing inside of a government um it's tough it, it makes it real tough. And I, I just want to say that I love how you referenced that Jack Ma had to go on vacation. <laughs> Jack, if you're ever in Mexico, let's hang out. Have a little drinks on me. <laughs> the, the, the disappearing act, that was Jack Ma. That, that was, yes. yeah, that was interesting. All right. Dead or alive? Let's do it. Let's do it. Let's, check, in a while. let's check the vital signs of, of some of these companies. And, and it's, it's interesting that we're talking about China because one of my, my favorite companies, what we're going to start with, Taiwan Semiconductors, man, it's, it's, I'm not going to say dead, of course, but let's just take the vital signs. It's trading just under $90. Mm -hmm. That Apple bin is definitely going to have an effect if this is sustained for any long period of time. Obviously, the, the role that Taiwan Semiconductors plays in the semi market being the supply of nearly 50% of the world's chips. Mm -hmm. But on the bright side, they are up 21% year to date. What's your thoughts on Taiwan Semiconductor? Taiwan Semiconductor is the most alive out of every company on this list. Um, this is like the ultimate red shirted stock. Like as soon as this geopolitical war is over and we have some kind of treaty where we have peace, Taiwan Semiconductor probably be in my like top four 
favorite stocks. It's the only thing that's holding me back from uh, touching the stock. So um, I love this alive and well, huge player, not only in the chip space, but in terms of like strategy amongst the global world powers, one of the most important assets that we have to consider if we're going to protect or not. So this is like if LeBron had to like red shirt a year and play a Duke, this would be TSM. But I just can't touch it yet. But as soon as this war gets cleared, the software that we're in, it'll probably be in my top four that I love the most for sure. Top four. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I put it as number five when we did our list. Yeah. Um, yeah. So the vital signs are very much alive. We're just we're, we're monitoring the situation. All right, let's go to this one. Philip Morris. We never talked about this company. Uh so tobacco company. Uh which have products in over 180 countries. 180 countries. I think the most notable product that people know is Marble Cigarettes. They'll yeah. probably know that. So what's your thoughts on Philip Morris? Just under 95, that's where they're trading at. What's your thoughts? Um, you can make an argument for it being a good recession play, if you will. Uh, from 2008, had an incredible bounce, but just because of what damage it does, going back to the Poison Index, from last week, one, one sector that I left out was tobacco. I don't like what they do to us. So, like, I mean, you're essentially manufacturing cancer and slow death. So while it could be a viable investment, this is, like, almost the equivalent of investing in prisons for me. I have to put this as dead. This is sure. dead. Yeah. 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 Smoking cigarettes. Yeah. We don't see that as much. Do you? Still see it? That's oh, pretty overseas. Overseas, for sure. Definitely in overseas. We see. Oh, that. yeah. Paris is going crazy. When I was trying to get yeah. my little beer from McDonald's. In the oh, restaurants man. and all that. It was like, bro. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Very the little club going crazy. My, ooh. <laughs> yeah. Not the vibes. Yeah. Philip Moore. Right, PM. I know some people like, hey, you didn't give me the ticker. Yeah. That's the ticker. The ticker is PM. Let's go to the next one. Uh, Darling Ingredients. This is an interesting one. Ticker D A R. Mm -hmm. So they are the largest publicly traded company turning edible. Uh, byproducts and food waste into sustainable products, and they are the leading producer of renewable energy. Just trading about at sixty-two dollars and fifty cents. Yeah, sure. What's what's your thoughts on 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 their ingredients? I'm a, I'm not going to say that they, they they had an incredible run, but if you look at like 2018, 2019, they were hovering around twenty three bucks. I mean, going back to nineteen ninety four, they were at eight bucks, and the highest they got was twenty three. And then this year they had an amazing rise to like 80 bucks. Anytime a stock has a multiple of like four or five X in one year and they didn't have consistent growth. It didn't cross any watch list of any major analyst. did not cross our list. I'm afraid of why um, this stock went up. I don't like the core business. The second quarter results were absolutely amazing. So I can't take that away. But anytime I see a stock go from like 19 bucks up to 85, it normally slides back to at least 70% from that high. So I'm not going to say it's dead, but I wouldn't look to invest in this one. Maybe a swing trade, but I definitely, I think this is uninvestable long-term. How about Mercedes? We spoke about that last week. Uh, they announced their new EV model, um, an affordable alternative in this, this space. Obviously we know Tesla is leading. Uh, Ford has come up with some, some interesting solutions, but Mercedes, and we spoke about it, being a luxury brand, no for luxury, having yeah. brand loyalty and, just having that moat of luxurious, when people think luxurious, they think Mercedes Benz. What's your thoughts on on Mercedes? Well, uh, what, what's Stephen they do with LeBron? Uh, great car, great company, great executive. Love the G wagon, especially in blue. Love the S sixty five, right? Great, love all of the S five fifty. Love Mercedes since I was a kid. My dad had one. The four thirty, the coupe, the Golf Wing, all of it. Love it. Stock basura. Yes, it is trash. It is. Yeah, it Tesla. Is. Like, I mean, <laughs> yeah. if you can wrap Jurassic Park shit inside of like a, a twenty-seven thousand year old egg waffle with sludge dumped on top of it, this would be Mercedes stock. As great as the company is, like in two thousand eight, the stock was at twenty-two bucks. In 2023, it's at 71 dollars, and people are acting like this is the greatest comeback of any luxury brand ever. When Mercedes Benz founded the luxury car brand, which is interesting, and it's like an OTC, so it's not even on the big indices. I love the car, hate the I mean, absolutely hate the stock. 
Um, honestly, I would do Tesla, GM before them. I may even do Lucid. I'm not even gonna lie before Mercedes. Lucid. What this about the first time I've ever said yeah, Toyota? Like Toyota just put did you see their new luxury vehicle that they put out? Kind of fire. I on the street the other day. The the Toyota the Toyota the looks Toyota they, look crazy. I made it look lie. like a telling him. That's not gonna work. <laughs> it's like the Christ. Remember I the Christ want the Phantom. I don't want the car to look like a Phantom. I want the Phantom. Want the Phantom. That's the Christ, that, that, that was the Christ of uh, Chrysler uh, Bentley. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah so they went crazy with that. Imitation is not a form of flattery, Steve. <laughs> you can't pull up with that. <laughs> but I mean, it was well designed. Cool. Maybe they can have go through like the Renaissance era, like Kia did a couple years ago. Um, but yeah, Mercedes is like grossly underperformed. And and the crazy part, every time the stock has gotten to the level of like seventy two to eighty bucks, it falls apart a fifty percent from there. So. Do you do you think they made it? Because this, this is interesting. Because when Tesla and we're watching it happen now with Tesla, they dropped the prices to make it more affordable to bring in more of a customer base. Bring it on home. Mercedes, yes, has also done that. Yes, and they and that's why you have the CLA and you yes. have the C class. C class. It it almost takes a little bit of the luster away from that luxurious feel. What are your thoughts on the comparisons between what Tesla is now doing and what they could have learned from what Mercedes? has done already it's a huge mistake if you're a luxury brand to drop your prices even when i do these price experiments because i know when i price it at ten thousand, people are going to be like oh my god who does he think he is to be able to charge 10 grand for this I don't know. if he was for the culture he wouldn't do it here i am having stock club at 4.99 and you would think it would be hundreds of thousands of people sign up nope so, oh, and shout out to everyone who signed up at Invest Fest for the five year deal. Guys, amazing prices were uploaded last night. Set your pending orders. If it made you money, please put yes in chat. Um, but when you have a luxury brand and you are differentiating from all the audiences and other uh, demographics, you don't want to see a comparable, like, there isn't a baby Rolls Royce you can go get that you would just see anywhere, like, um. So it's a huge mistake because not only does it affect the price uh, margin, it affects the research and development you, you can do. It affects your marketing and advertising budget. It affects your outreach. It affects um, the quality partners that you can then hire or put on the board. It affects your employee base because you have less capital to work with. So that's why I said in the beginning, I think for Tesla owners that bought in 2020 to be underwater based on them dropping the price now of the X or the S, it was a travesty. It's a pricing mismanagement issue. And normally, brands that base everything based on price, historically in a retail space, space Woolworths, Sears, Kmart, JCPenney, Foot Locker, um, Brokeheads, even though Dame tried to bring them back, everyone that led based on the, them Starberries that was garbage. Stefan, I know what you're trying to do. I love you. I think you're amazing. But no, the Shacks, no. Little Shaq, love you. Um, mm -hmm. But anytime, shout, out, no, shout out to shout out to the shacks though. Anytime that you try and lead with low price, it's a fucking disaster. And then no one wants them. No one wanted the $15 kicks. People are aspiring to push higher. Now, I think it's a mistake to have too much opulence in the country over a certain period of time, over like a 150-year period. But it's a huge mistake for a company to lower prices for scale. Let this be a lesson, ladies and gentlemen. Yep. The price is the price. All right, let's let's throw a wild card. And we talked about this. I know we spoke about Eli Lilly earlier. But let's check the vital signs of Stryker. Uh, if you watched over the past six months, you looked at that chart. It's been a so roller coaster baby. ride. It's been a roller coaster ride. So let's talk about Stryker, ticker SYK. For those not in the know, I mean, Stryker, when you talk about surgical equipment, medical equipment, uh, patient handling, emergency medical equipment, all of these things. They've got their hands in on. What's your thoughts on Striker? It's trading at about three hundred dollars currently, year to date. It's up twenty two percent. Nice performance. So, what's your thoughts? I love Striker. Alive, well, vital signs are amazing, and still has a monopoly on that bed business. Like, if you ever just go visit anyone in the hospital, the bed that they normally prop them up with is a Striker bed. Um, if we go back to March of what. 20 or excuse me, June 2022 is at 196. Mm -hmm. That's amazing. But if we look over the last 10 years in 2013, 
it was at 78 bucks. It's now at 310 for a brand you never even heard of it, like and mainstream media. Um, and that's why I always say the seven to 10 year period, which I think David Gross also brought up um, at the Market Mondays LA show. Great period of time to hold. Um, everyone that I see that has disappointment in a market is usually because they were doing like zero day expiring options or they had a great stock and didn't hold on to it long enough. You can't rotate your way into wealth. All the conversations you, okay, that's every time you talk to Robert Smith, how many times did he mention sector rotation? <laughs> it's for broke people. That's for hedge funds to sell clients to get a new crop. Okay, I got regular Coke. That's my tech rotation. This trash like Coke, this is the second quarter rotation to then get in more clients. And then I'm going to tell you AI is the other rotation. And when that's not working, I'm going to go to crypto. When that don't work, I'm going to bring the fucking dinosaurs back. Sector rotation is for people who don't want to get rich. You never heard DI mention sector rotation one time, not once, not Diddy, not Puff, not Will Smith, not Jada, not that red table, not Chris Rock. Hold these fucking stocks for 10. Like, that's it. Seven to 10 years. Hold. You don't see them sector rotate and put out shows once every now. The name of the game in every business is consistency. You can't sector rotate your way into growth with Intel. Yeah, I'd be triggered. Intel, like a bad X or something to me. Quit talking to me about Intel and IBM. <laughs> it's dead. I'm sorry. Shout out to everybody who works there. No one will make it come back. No, nobody wants Watson. They started a trend and didn't finish it. Mistake. Sorry. Whoever had access over liability for y'all start using it. Mistake. You're dumb, <laughs> okay? They won't say it. Keep the camera on me. Don't go to Trevor shot. Get dumb. <laughs> you should have trademarked it. It hit different when they trademark it and run it to the moon. Next season of Revolt, who we getting? We're going to start with Will Smith and Jaden <laughs> and Tory Lanez from jail. Hold, <laughs> hold your head. Hold your head. <laughs> and congrats hold on your wedding. Hold your head. And welcome home to B Jizzle. Yes. Mm. Trying to put the 600, they ain't made them yet. Hey, yeah, speaking of revolt, we got somebody that we're gonna be interviewing. I guess we can say the name because they said it, they did say it. So, we will be interviewing Lauren London, yes, for revolt world summit. And that just completes the whole circle. Like, it's just amazing, man. Nip was somebody that we really, really, you know, wanted to talk to, somebody that was a major inspiration. Um, for us, we never got a chance to meet him, unfortunately, but. Yeah. You know, to do the legendary piece with all money in everybody, his his brother, Hobby Supreme, the whole team, and you know, build that real relationship with them. Like those guys, like I talked to Black Sam every other week, like that's my guy. And um, obviously Dave Gross, which was his business advisor, pivotal in the situation. You know, that's somebody who we've built a great relationship relationship with. Had him on Market Mondays Live in LA, was on Assets Over Liabilities, and Steve O, that was you know, his go to when it comes to music and we built a great relationship with him. He actually introduced us to Shine. So pretty much his, his whole inner circle. Yeah. Um, we've been able to not only meet, but actually, you know, develop great relationships. When the only last one out of that piece was Lauren London. That was the only one. And, you know, it just happens organically. You don't know, ever want to try to force something and just, you know, and it just happened. Um, shout out to Revolt. And um, we'll be interviewing Lauren London. That's yeah. Um, for Revolt World um, in two weeks. So make sure you're there for that. But uh that's um that's another one. It's legendary. Yeah. It's definitely that's another one. one. Did Lauren London mention sector rotation or when Nipsey was investing? <laughs> did, did he bring that up as I, one of the keys? I, I, I did not did not see that in the notes. <laughs> sector rotation. <laughs> Jesus. Sector rotation play. Don't work. Instant fail. <laughs> the sector rotation play. All right. Um, are you are you done or just still some more? Uh that was our last one. That was our last one. Yeah. Okay, so you're not doing the Amsterdam stock or the Tokyo exchange? Stock? We're gonna save it. I'm gonna save it. Yeah, we'll save it. Yeah, we'll all right. It. So, um, Goldman estimates that China's housing crisis will reduce the country's economic growth by 1.5 percent this year. Will this spill over to our economy, or will we see an inverse in housing sector for our economy? Um, I think we're already starting to see it. Um, I put up an interesting stat, I think, yesterday. Um, that our debt to income ratio is higher than it was in 2006 and 2007 before the crash. 
And all that means is, um, especially with China having an issue, at some point prices will be corrected. But I think the entire population got too greedy in, in the entire world with these housing prices. And I think everything has been priced unfavorably. Um, of course, BlackRock and Blackstone had an effect on that. But I think every major country in the world started to factor in their profits more so than the consistency in pricing for the residents who live there. And that's coming back to bite them. Like when you have houses, remember like in a pandemic, like people were putting in $80,000 over asking. If that isn't a bubble, I don't know what it is. But then it starts to happen in London, happen in China, happen in Mexico City, happen in Australia. You have to find a way to make these homes affordable. And, rent, and my guy said it back in the day, rent too damn high. The rent's been too damn high for a long time. It's one of the reasons that you have to invest long term to outpace inflation. But I think we're going to see a mass correction worldwide on these properties. And if not, it's going to cause a contagion level event that is going to really decimate the economy and stock market overall. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, for sure. Now, if you can find a Chinese stock to that is housing based to short, please put mm -hmm. it in chat. That will be the move, especially if we're looking at the Fibonacci ratio, if, if we're gauging from 100 and it went down to 78 percent because everything else should be flat. If we can short it down to that 50 percent or 23 six, we can have a nice win. Um, so kind of like a big short for China's market, if we can find one that is available. I wouldn't necessarily do options on it. I know some of you are going to do that. Maybe if you want to sell options on it, you could. But um, a pure put would be tough because they may not. Even with the brokers, I'm seeing a lot more brokers in light of what we talked about with my Forex funds and all that. This has been happening before. I've known some people that have had some puts that have been up four or 500% and they get liquidated at 150%. You got to be mindful, like <laughs> every layer that you go. And I know some people be like, well, man, maybe if Diddy would have did this, this could have happened with Diageo. Every level, there's a new devil you got to fight. Mm -hmm. You think it, this is over like you think they want all of us congregating, learning financial literacy, talking private equity and VC and all that publicly. Oh, OK, wait till all y'all get here. We're going to put up a whole bunch more roadblocks. Mm -hmm. And it's probably going to be from people that look like us. So if he's still fighting that battle and Jay's still fighting this battle, um, Joe Button asked a question two years ago. What is the stream worth on Spotify? Still ain't got an answer. True. I think that's what makes investing such an interesting, interesting thing because yeah. it's, it's it's faceless for a brokerage uh -huh. because it's just a name. It's really just a social security number. Yep. Um, but there are going to be parameters, right? Just because yep. you, you saw you were up. 400% doesn't mean that's where you're getting filled at because every yep. time you buy somebody has to sell and every time you sell there has to be somebody on the other end buying and so you yep. got to be mindful of that that's that, that I'm glad you said that's very important. Where's Tim, where is he where's Joe Biden he's on vacation he's on vacation no I don't know <laughs> no he back yeah he went up on tax zone so he back oh yeah I did see recently, that recently I did see that Whoa, for what? wow for what boy wow. um I don't I guess tax shout, to Corey, shout to Ian flip Mel ish I you know what I'm talking did crazy see that. yeah 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 I did see that so crazy on about Joe Biden wow yeah free. what'd he say I got let me play it for you after this he's a megalomaniac and anybody who's around Joe is weak and Joe has some great counters weak <laughs> he Talk went on a whole, it took I think a, it was like a nine minute rant with the word week, yeah, as a title. Joe Biden, yeah, about yeah. tax on, yeah, yeah. What was, he, what was he saying? You let Troy Av trick you out your spot. That's weak. You walked into a now, party with, with and a, I'm not a shit dude. Week. I, yeah, I don't that's want a to fact. He said, yeah, yeah, but it was, it was, uh, I did hear that. Can't we all just get along? No, give me the same energy from last week. <laughs> Satin and Terry Cloth. <laughs> uh, oh, man. Yeah. I saw you went with a Hawaiian lava. What was the inspiration behind that? At oh, Victoria's the, Secret Fashion Show. Oh, the Purple Dragon? Uh -huh. Yeah. I forgot that was last week. <laughs> oh, damn, that was good. Oh, man. But you kept your promise. You said you was going to be in a t-shirt this week, and here you are. You know. Don't shine. Don't do your, your shine, though. Come on, <laughs> <laughs> let the light shine, but well played. 
Uh, yeah, everybody um, should get along. But I, I also see too, like um, even in the investment industry, TD Ameritrade got bought by Schwab. When you see a lot more infighting too, even like you see in the podcast space, it's a sign that the money is not flowing. I keep asking every interview I go to, how many podcasters make a million dollars a year or more? And everybody keep asking me, like I'm asking the secret to go to heaven. For the audience, that's because it's not that many people, black or white, making it. The boy had to put his wife on camera with somebody black to get the revenue up. You don't think that's, that's the super indecent proposal. <laughs> then for revenue to fall back down, you know what's bad when you get a personal call. Man, don't no call this week. We're going through a little. Man, I don't want you to do what? Worse than what you went through? Yeah, Flacco can do it, but if you... <laughs> Jesus. Shout out Brick Baby. Shout out 55. Shout out everybody up there. 55. <laughs> The oh boy, funny <laughs> boy, he had to get the Black Avengers up there to get their revenue back up. Oh, man, <laughs> boy, these are just jokes written by 85 South DC Young Fly. You go be if I made you money, please put yes in chat. Oh, <laughs> When Shout out back. I'm not a crip. I'm not affiliated with nothing. Don't come at me with that. Please, 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 please. <laughs> please I don't want no smoke. Please. Oh, man. Come in peace. Yes. Oh, man. <laughs> well, Credit card can you go see? <laughs> <laughs> How do you segue out of that? <laughs> let's see. Let's, 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 let's uh, <laughs> Yes. Okay. All right. All righty. Ladies no jumper you. joke check. 55th joke check. <laughs> If I'm, if I'm part funny, put funny in chat. Yeah, let's go. Mexico ain't getting different. I see it, man. The story's looking incredible. Don't want to come back. Yeah. It's going to be looking tough. Incredible. Mexico, big fight. for Speaking of Mexico, big fight this weekend. Oh, two weeks. Two weeks. Uh, it's Canelo, right? Canelo Alvarez yeah. versus yeah. Charlo. That's going to be tough. It's a big one, yeah. It's going to be a big it's gonna one. Be a big yeah. one. It's gonna oh, be a big who you all got your money on? I mean, Canelo won the best to ever do it, so it's hard to bet against him. So yeah, it's hard. To yeah, bet. super skilled. I'm taking Canelo. Yeah. So and especially right. when you can get the supplements right out the store. <laughs> nah, come on. <laughs> it's kind of crazy. These just jokes. Allegedly. Like, Alleg allegedly. Just, allegedly. Like, allegedly. Mike, allegedly. put a disclaimer. These are just jokes. Allegedly. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right. Um, <laughs> yes. <laughs> It's not sponsored by. Yes. yes. Okay. Credit card delinquencies are. Let's talk about that. Credit card delinquencies <laughs> are at a record high among small banks. Mm -hmm. Could this be the catalyst for the final round of consolidation in small and regional banks? Um, I believe so. Like, if the debt rate goes up to maybe nine percent, or maybe ten percent, because of course. It's fine right now. And of course, I know a lot of people want to be flipping about this GDP, that the income ratio, credit cards are being high. But very rarely when we talk to people, do I feel even people that I know that are rich are feeling a crunch because either they're having to take care of more people, they're having more expenses and trying to grow their business or sustain throughout this period. Um, and I'm seeing a slow collapse of the regional banks, small banks, I feel bad for, but this is a classic example of the big banks and too big to fail banks are going to get bigger. I feel like Chase is going to be the, the big, biggest benefactor yep. as a result. Um, Bank of America, they need to get their things together or in the next cycle in 2034, they may have a chance of going under. I like Brian Moynihan as the CEO, but the culture at Bank of America isn't as strong as it used to be, especially pre-2008. Um, but just like we saw a whole bunch of banks in 2007 and 2008 either get bought or go under, I think we're going to see a consolidation in the banking space. And if we continue to have uh, record interest rates and people are struggling to pay their credit card debts and balances are remaining higher, yeah, I think we're going to see some of these get bought up. Yeah, you, you're talking about it. Lending Tree put out a report. They said that the average U.S. credit card interest rate is 24.3%. That is insane. Almost 25. 
average. So you know there's a bunch of people that's 29%, 30%, 35%. You bet I'm going to a loan shark. Right. So that's that's from a credit card. But that's the first delinquency we look need to look at. The second delinquency we need to look at is the student loan delinquency that's about mm. because effective this month, repayment is back in order. And so, yeah, well, it'll take a couple of months to see who can pay and who's not going to pay and for it to be reported. But that's a delinquency we need to look at. Car loans, mm -hmm. those delinquency numbers are going up. And yeah. so if we're watching all these things go up, uh, we have to take account. Who is the who are the people that are loaning, putting, creating the loans and how if people are not going to be able to pay them, what do those banks now do? Are there yeah. any cars that are new available under thirty five thousand dollars? The key is I'm seeing fifty two thousand. Yeah, I think I just read a report. I think the cheapest model is for a new car it might be twenty four thousand. What and kind of car is that? Uh, who was it? I think it was Toyota. What's under? Is the Corolla the, the smallest they got? Yeah. It might have been that. It might have been that. Yeah, but that just think about that. Like, Look at Rashad. Zoom in here, Rashad. No, no, no. No, no, no. No, disrespect. No, 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 no disrespect. No disrespect <laughs> to anybody that, that has these vehicles. But it's becoming more expensive to have them. You have student loan debt. You got a credit card debt. Wages are not increasing. At all. Right? Interest rates are about to be raised again. It's a recipe. And they're lying about these jobs. Can we be honest? You're getting four hours at Shake Shack is not like boosting the economy. They're lying. They're lying. Like the math ain't math. Same way with the, with the music industry. At one point, an artist, a flop was 120. Burner Boy sold 21,000. Are you lying now or then? It's impossible. How was Smith and Wesson able to do 115 first week and now Burner Boy only do 21,000? There's a lie somewhere. The numbers are not adding up. And when you factor in interest rates with everything adjusting, our payments are going to be higher than what we pay for defense yeah. and military. And we spend too much on the y'all want to talk about grift. Who the F-15 grip? It hit different. I ain't got to the level. I'm trying to learn how to sell a fighter jet. Um, Biden, well, everything I said before was just jokes. I hope everything goes well for you and your son. Teach me how to sell some fighter jets so we can. That's the real bag. Yeah. Getting 20, 30 million a pop per. What did that dude sold the airport? You seen that? Yeah, Nigerian. Boy. <laughs> <laughs> now, we won't be interviewing them for all of you haters. <laughs> but it was hell of a move. <laughs> Yo, he sold an airport. That's you sold a whole airport? I fixed his boy. It was, it was, two, it was, it was like two, two, two bills? Something, something crazy number. Two hundred. It was 600 crazy. million. Crazy Nine million figures, million. 10 figures. Sold an airport. Hey, man. Hey, it's tough. But I, as Rashad would say, I say that to say we need to fix our economy so that we can all do better and prosper. Also, we have macro down periods. I mentioned Bender Cycle before. Uh, when we went to Breakfast Club the first time, I'm like, yo, 24 coming? We hit a recession? Charlamagne's like, you sure? Troy's like, yep. He gets throwing out the numbers. And here we are, about to be in 24, all hell on earth as COVID is spiking back up. So then if COVID spikes back up, the pharma companies are going to do well, but we're going to have to probably sit back in the house and while all travel and tourism is down yeah. at scale. It's interesting as you watch these these companies and you're like, I wonder if they're doing well. As I'm watching the US Open and <laughs> I'm looking at Moderna as the official sponsor, I'm thinking about like four years ago that this wasn't the case. They got like the instant replay, the best shot of the game. I'm like, wow. That's <laughs> crazy. But crazy. in due time for, yeah, yeah, people are talking some sniffles in about three weeks. It's flu season. Yeah. It's almost over. Yep. Almost over, y'all. Um, all right. So debt to income hits all time high amongst households. Mm -hmm. Uh, why does this concern you? And are there any stocks you are looking to invest in as a result? Yeah, I was searching all over to find a real estate stock that I really love. Um, and I really can't find one. The only one that would play favorably in this would be JP Morgan. Um, I think at some point in 30 years, 
they're probably just like in accounting, there's a big four, and we're almost there now. I think there will probably be like four big banks and then just like small community branches or small community banks, and that's it. There won't be any regional or like mid sized banks at all. Um, but the reason why it concerns me is like if you're going for a $200,000 house, your income is or your debt is a hundred grand, like the ratios are really skewed, but what is really showing at scale through every class, middle class, upper class, lower class, that everyone is having like a tighter time. Like I keep saying it. I don't think these artists went on tour and I don't think Drake wants to be on tour, but I think somebody probably told him and Beyonce, you need to go on tour to not only increase the resolve of, and the joy of American citizens, but you need to collect money off of this one tour for the next four or five years for the opportunities that may come and to protect you and your family that you have to provide for. Um, when a debt to income ratio is higher, shout out to everyone that does mortgages. But when we're at a rate past 2006 and 2007 and no one's saying that we're in a bubble in a bubble currently, but I think that we're in a lot of trouble. Um, of course, Apple, Microsoft, VOO, VTI, what would do well in any any environment. The only time I think Apple will start to fall apart is if in, if interest rates get to 15%. I highly doubt we ever get there. Um, but JP Morgan is like the only player that I think will be able to survive any kind of market because of the relationships that they have with the government. On the real estate side, there's not many I love. Um, even in that space, Blackstone and BlackRock are the two most important players and market ma makers in the real estate space. And they've done it by design. I think of it like this, a hedge fund and a bank switch their strategy to buying commercial properties across the world and wanted to become the world's biggest renter. Of course, there was pushback that they didn't have as many units as one thought, but they're making a concerted effort to be able to have income when all the tech valuations went to shit and when the startup market um, fell as a result. They didn't do this by accident. I think they know that we're going to go back to a real environment where real businesses are going to have to produce real profit, real products. And because we outsource so much, we didn't provide enough education inside of our schools to make us prepare for the tech sectors or for the jobs that we're outsourcing by design um, as a part of the agreement to be able to outsource overseas and then end up messing up, messing up our economy. So JP Morgan, BlackRock, Blackstone are the three that I like as a result, but debt to income ratio being this high, that's not going to be good. Is there is there a number? Is there a percentage that you, you know I mean, if you three reports, people will tell you anything under 35% would be a good debt to income ratio? I, I mean, I'm going off my mortgage professionals. It really needs to be like 30, ideally, mm. but to be this high, like, and then America's debt to GDP is met, like, so when the consumer is technically broke and the country is technically broke that's what and this is the reason why historically america has had to be in markets that were not filled with integrity that poison index of food pharma alcohol tobacco that's by design then we factor in the military industrial complex the prison industrial complex you know it's our best, even if you throw in like Meta and Instagram and LinkedIn, like the, the social dynamic that's there, that's not great for our mental health. That's why like our mental health business is able to come about because there's so much poison in our air, airways produced of Wi-Fi, radiation being everywhere. Like most of the things that we have produced in this country, even going to fossil fuels, like have a negative effect on, on the environment and our body. So. But the fun part about investing is if you, you can find a way um, to buy the right companies at the right time, you can take care of your family forever. But I will say you need to start looking at some emerging markets. I'll just be out here get, getting a little tequila sunrise. <laughs> it's just jokes for my dad. This is a light Coke sector, ro Coca-Cola rotation, right? You have to come out here and actually see. So when I was at the same thing, when I was out here talking to some of the locals. What does tourism look like here? This is my second place I've asked. Down 70% here. You can see it. I went all around, went to the, all up the shoreline yesterday. I saw 46 cars on a 50-minute ride on a Saturday. 
You know what that tells me? Broke. Whole country, whole world is broke with the exception of certain pockets, which is the 1% and the 1%. They had to go to quiet luxury to not throw in your face. I got on Lauren Piano. It's tough times, but this is when the best businesses are, are made in the toughest of times. Instacart. So Instacart IPO valuation is slashed by $7.4 billion in the midst of consolidating startup market. Mm -hmm. um, is this new valuation fair? And are you interested in investing in the company in the future? Yeah. Um, shout out to Rashawn Williams. He put a lot of people in. Rashawn, you got to come on the show. What you waiting on? Shout out to my guy. I think he said it was uh, his his bedtime. Um, it interfered with his, with his sleep pattern, I believe. <laughs> Espiritu Santo. Oh, oh, don't want to um, do that. We, this we, we, is not sponsored by we, Lab. Mike, we, we, we would not want to do that. I, th I thought that's what he said. That's not what he said. I, I, this is what we, we were doing live shows. Not now that we are occasionally pre-taping. Maybe he can come on. And we got to get get my guy Doug on here too. Um, um, do I love like Instagram? Same rule. I have to wait ninety days for it to come out. I think um, Instacart Stripe. Definitely arm are getting crushed by the timing. Mm -hmm. Like I wish Instacart could have went public when everyone was doing a little spat garbage. But because I think that would have cleaned up the space a lot. I think they would have had a lot more value if it would have went public during that time. Will they do okay? Probably will over time. I think it's set to be anywhere from like 19 to 24 bucks. Um, I think it's fair value at that point. But if they would have went public in 2022, I think they would have done a lot better. I'm not excited about it yet, but maybe after that 90 day period, if I can see some revenue numbers. Yeah, um, they, the numbers are consistent from 2022 to, to now, which is interesting. But I'm not sure if they they're, they're a product of the pandemic. Those the, the, the numbers that they were seeing, the signups, right, because everybody was home, everybody was ordering. And so it had that IPO in 2021. The That's valuation the was at 40 billion. <laughs> That that's eighty percent less that's now, crazy. right? So right now, they, 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 it says it's going to open at nine billion. So, I mean, you could have seen a huge pullback because the numbers would have subsided because the pandemic has somewhat subsided. I still use Instacart. I think it's it's a, it's a great company. Yeah, I do too. Um, but when they had to file the reports, one of the key words that they said is that they recently have become profitable. Like that's a good sign. That's a great sign. That's a good sign. That wasn't the sign in twenty twenty one. Yeah, or 2022. The first quarter of 2023 is when they they've actually received the profit, which is great. Yeah, we you know companies up until recently that hadn't made a profit, and so that's interesting to see. Um, is the valuation now fair? Perhaps, right? Perhaps, Forty yeah. billion is a lot different than that. Now. Was crazy, <laughs> right? Had it had it stayed at that level and people invested in and watched a pullback, that you would have felt a lot differently. I think at this level with the existing customers that they have. The fact that they are profitable um, and the, the the level for expansion, I think it sits, it sits in, a, in a good place. Um, more importantly, I think the era of fast, casual, um, like middle class luxury service, I would bundle them, Uber, of course, Instacart, DoorDash, all in that same bundle of like middle class luxury services. I think it's the end of the era for that. Because now the money has to float. Of course, it's going to float to AI. I think a lot more money is going to end up floating to blockchain on the startup side. But like, I think this is a great business idea for 2009 through 2015, 16. But I don't think it's going to have the same impact, especially if people have less money. You're going to end up going to wanting to go to the store or actually spending less. And I'm going to say it again. We need to build more companies that actually have an impact on everyone's life. Like podcasting, just about podcasting is not going to work. But, so, who, but who who's your customer? Right. I think like they have a niche. So if we're talking just middle class people, like I know, like you say all the time, like I order Uber Eats all the time. You might not have time to go to school. Right. Right. We may not have time. Our lives are so busy. Even for us, like here, we it's Instacart because we just don't have the time to be in the supermarket. Yes, there is. There is an audience that's going to go traditional route and I need to see it. I need to feel the products. But there are people in, I guess, from this generation that are like, hey, I know what I like. Just ship it to my house. Yeah. 
Yeah, um, but, but it comes back down to the profit margins. Like if I were running that business, hypothetically, let's say if you're paying a driver, even with all the service fees, maybe you may get 11% mm. for every dollar that comes in. That's a really tough business model. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Now it's a great business model when interest rates are zero. When they bump up to five and a half percent, and I can only imagine how many employees they have and how many investors are actually in um, the Series A and Series B. It's really tough when those margins are really thin. Mm -hmm. It's really tough. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's a good sign for the market that IPOs are happening. Mm -hmm. It is. So we got, you said ARM, uh, Instacart, mm -hmm. Clavio uh, is another one that's going to be IPOing soon. So I know there was an influx. We saw the SPACs and we saw a bunch of IPOs in the pandemic then pretty much last year yeah good luck even a company like stripe is we're still waiting to see when that's going to happen but yeah they may have to wait to 27. that's, that's tough that's tough yeah because like if the environment isn't like the the perfect time okay let me ask you guys when do you think if you were a black filmmaker or podcaster was the best time in the last six years to put out a show um right before the pandemic 2019 during the pandemic. when is the worst time there's too many of y'all talking about the same thing right now. <laughs> Sorry, St look, like Stitcher went out of business. Sorry, Rory and all. Like, shout to y'all, love y'all too. But when like podcast companies are going out of business, <laughs> yeah, this guy's playing, he's playing a new tell, ball ball. Like the market is done; it's dried up. Timing is key. Time and and sometimes like you have to know when to put your ego aside to say, "Hey, I want to do this. I want to be a part of something." I want to help. Thank God for all the work that we did years prior before we even did the show. Um, a lot of business comes down to timing. Also, for homework, I want you guys to compare LVMH's net margin, Eli Lilly's net margin, Apple's margin versus Instacart, Uber, and Netflix. Mm. And that margin is the name of the game. When things get tight and tough, even if you lose your customer base or a considerable portion, like look at Disney. Greatest American media brand of all time. They're having troubles. If you could have fixed, and it, this is why when we say don't have lifestyle creep, that's true in your business too. If you're going to spend $55 billion on a project or $55 million on a project, like you have to know where the return is going to come from. Have to know. I was thinking of those companies when I was saying that we know companies that haven't turned profits. Because I remember our early episodes when we were, even before Uber was public, I think we, yeah. had, we did an episode and we were talking about the expectation of when they're going to become profitable. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so. And for all of you that, that are seeking funding, like uh, angel investors and VCs will tell you that they don't want you to be profitable so that they can take over the lion's share of your business to then take a public and then push you to the backside. You can't play those same games if you have 60% voter rights in your company and you have 55% margins. That's the one thing I'll say about Zuckerberg to the end of time. That boy made sure he had majority voting rights and that those margins were high. You're not about to come in and take this, what I what I stole from the Winkle Vi twins. Tough. Bet you don't. Yeah. This is business 101. You have to go study every great business. I think this is why it's really important to go study the rise and fall of every company to know what is happening. Mark Zuckerberg, every time I say something, he called. Hold on, that's me. Oh, well, like, who is that? Mark Zuckerberg. It's Mark. He's focused. He want to talk about generative AI, how they they ramping it up over there. Pause. So, all right. Let's end Mark, I love you. Kudos to Priscilla and all the kids. And yes. And if I've used your platform since 2005, I'm going to put yes in chat. I love you, Mark. As a as a parent, what steps would you take um, to make your children successful? Um, Rashad, can you kick this one off? What steps would I take to make children successful? No, it's already successful. But like, if you were a new parent, or for the new parents out there, given the environment that we're in now, um, what would you do, like a three step or four step system, to make sure that your kid is successful going forward? Um, successful in life all the way around. Yes, I would make them play a sport. I was just talking about this yesterday. I think every, I, I think every child should. I think that should be mandatory in school. Like you know how like math and science are mandatory. I think sports should be mandatory. 
for a variety of different reasons. Um, nutrition. Um, we're in a childhood obesity is at an all time high, and um, even diabetes. I was reading at, at children um, yeah. are, get, are getting dosed with diagnosed with diabetes. We already know the health crisis with adults. So you develop um, your health patterns early, and that usually stays consistent for the rest of your life. Mm -hmm. So I feel like from a health standpoint, and that has an effect on your mental health as well, as far as um, you know, the healthier you are, variety of different factors. So I would definitely encourage and push my child to play sports. Something mm -hmm. I have done with my son since he was eight years old. Um, and I just, like I said, I don't, if you make it to the professional, then that's great. But not even looking at it from that standpoint, just looking at it from the health standpoint, but then also from the, the, the intangible things that sports provides from um, leadership skills, working with, working with it in a team structure, um, being disciplined, um, staying on task, um, you know, having something to do. That's important nowadays. Like, you know, just if you don't have nothing to do, you're just going to stay home and play video games all day or, or do some, some, something negative, um, and relationships. Even to this day, like I've met so many great people, met somebody the other day. We was in a store in Manhattan that I played basketball with 20 years ago that yeah. recognized me. So it's like, you know, I, it's just, it's a great networking, um, tool as far as, you know, the different relationships that you, that you build in, in the world of sports. So, okay. So that's definitely something I would do to in ensure or at least help um, my child become successful for sure. I would also, um, you know, try to expose them to as much as possible. So travel and different things of that nature, like you had to, to the best of your abilities, yeah. um, you know, whether that's going to different states or if you're fortunate enough, you could take your child to different countries, different cultures. I think it's extremely important. So it was like, even my son, like, you know, he went to Paris, he went to London, He's been to Mexico. He's going to Ghana. Um, and that's actually his birthday. So we're going to yeah. do a birthday. Um, oh, that's a fire. For there. So I just think it's important for him to see different cultures. I feel like that's really how you um, keep things in perspective and you, you're able to grow when you you realize that, you know, your part of the world is just a small part of the world. It's not like the end all be all. So that's a, that's a different level of education that you can't get in the classroom. And, you know, that's something I was fortunate to do. I went to school in Hawaii and I was traveling once again, going back to basketball, but um, that happened for me a little bit later in life. Yeah. So no, I think as early as possible that you can expose them to different environments is something that's extremely beneficial for sure. And, um, the last thing I would say is um, to make sure that, you know, you have conversations with them um, about a variety of different topics in, in a more like, you know, adult manner, because um, then that just exposes them to and just helps them mature. So mm -hmm. a lot of times people like exclude their kids from conversations like, Yo, you, you're not ready for this or stay in, the, stay in a child's place. I just feel like, you know, it's better. If they're actually, even if they're not involved in the conversation, they can just be there just to hear a conversation. Like, you know, you pick up a lot from just being around certain situations. So I feel like, you know, having them in more mature conversations about a variety of different things um, will help them in 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 their maturity standpoint and 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 grow. So those are my three tips fire. on parenting. <laughs> Troy, about what about you? You're a super parent? What, what, uh, uh, man, I think that exposure piece, I, I don't want to piggyback on everything you said. I mean, it's pretty spot on. Um, yeah, being, that. being engaged. Um, and one of the things I'm very big on is um, being present, not just being here, but being present in, in any in many aspects, whether it's in their, their social life and their emotional health. Like I want to be make sure that I'm aware and, and I know what's going on and I can offer assistance. But the exposure piece. It's bigger than just taking them to places because that's important. But like you said, in conversations, like even for example, when we were doing InvestFest, you know, we gifted money to the young adults um, from our community that came down. Yeah. And one of the things is I, I brought my son to the bank to show him the money. And rather than doing it, I gave him the job of partitioning, the, rationing the money for each kid that was going to yeah. come up. We were getting like $250. And so it was his job to take $10,000. He's looking at it, right? And he's, like he's looking at this is what ten thousand dollars looks like, so exposing them to that and then ha giving them the responsibility to this is the importance of giving back. Um, so showing them those things, uh, and then you know exposing them to to real life situations, right? I 
I, I like to lead by demonstration. Yeah. And so they they're watching me as a man, number one. They're watching me as a son because my, my parents are in the same uh household that I'm in, but they're also watching me as a husband uh to their mother. And so yeah. I everything, you know, I'm super int intentional about the way I'm conducting myself and the conversations that I'm having and the tone that I'm having with them and the people I'm choosing to be around. And I think in Vest Fest this year, there was a moment when um my son was with me and uh, we were going through this, I mean, the marketplace and it was just tons of people yeah. crowded. We were walking with SH and I looked in his, his eyes. And I said, you okay? He's like, I'm all right, I'm good, I'm good. Um, and I, I sensed a little fear in him because it was just so many people. And right after we, we finished and we got to the, the top of the marketplace um, at our at our booth, he texted his mom. He said, Mom, this is what I want to do. Like, I want to be this important. I want to be yeah. a billionaire. So, like, that level of exposure, um, it yeah. was just, you can't duplicate that. And yeah, you it's can't. something that can't be taught. Um, so, we're, I'm very fortunate. And we're very fortunate to be in the position that we can provide our kids with those type of experiences. Um, yeah. So, everything he said in addition to that. Yeah, that's amazing. Y'all both killed that. Ain't, ain't a room left for me to say nothing. No. <laughs> <laughs> um, for me, listening is really key. Um, I think a lot of times we push our agenda, our thoughts so much on our kids. It's really important to listen to see what their feedback is. That's one really big thing that I've learned. And it helps boost their confidence. Because if you're not willing to listen to your kid, it makes it, them feel almost like a burden. So even with like Xander, I love just like having dialogue with him. You know, Xander can talk a million miles a minute, but I love like having that dialogue with him to see what he's thinking. Um, number two, like you said, exposure is so key. Like even uh, yesterday we was having a conversation. He's like, hey, I got some money I want to put, but I want to double it. But I'm like, well, how much, what percentage do you really need to double it once you factor in taxes? What if you have payroll, you will want to reinvest, you want to market? And he was like, yeah, I really need to get like 4X return. <laughs> but the crazy part is like he said it so confidently because I've been having these micro lessons, which brings me to my final one, is don't try to teach your kids everything you didn't apply. Only talk to them about what you're doing. Like so many times I'll see parents want to like want their kids to read like a 13F. And I'm like, you wouldn't want to read that in ninth grade. Like, <laughs> Put the money in an account, make it, let them see it. Like the kids are attached to outcome. And a lot of times when kids are tuning out, parents, they'll never say it, but they know that you don't believe in that shit, how you say that you do. How can you preach to someone to do something when they know you aren't doing it? Like Xander always, oh man, you always got to work. And I'm like, but when you start playing ball, all he wants to do is dribble in the house to the tennis ball and just hoop all day. I'm like, when you love something, you'll finally feel what I feel. And like, he's like found that in basketball now. So it's really important that you show kids what you're doing and not the theory that you want to, like you can't duplicate going to Paris or being at invest fest. So like, and Troy, like I always give you compliments. Like you're the most patient person I ever seen. The Troy joy thing is real. Like just tonality is key. Yeah. Or even just like knowing like his college was paid for like, Having that kind of confidence, knowing like if I stay focused, I can do X, Y, D, or even like I took him to meet Steph. Like he went back the first day mm -hmm. of school. Hey, my name's Xander. Hey, I met Steph a couple weeks ago. And they're like, You lie. Let me go get my phone. My dad took me and we were at this event. All these people were talking about that. Like to, for them to have that kind of joy, uh, especially when I see Nas, because Nas be like so chill about everything. That's be dope. Like, so lead by example, but also I think it's really important to strive to be something to be something that your kids are actually proud yeah. of I'm, i I appreciate the the patience thing that was something i had to learn as a man as a father yeah i'm like because as as a profession it was something i had to have i'm working with five-year-olds and i have to be patient all day and yeah. then you feel like well i felt like when i was coming home i didn't have the same level of patience for my kids and they're the yeah. most important thing in my life and so I, I think I just, one day I just had an epiphany. Like, if I'm going to be that patient with this group of kids who are important to me because, yeah, this is my profession, mm -hmm. I have to have even more patience for the two that I created. Um, so I appreciate that. That's deep. And also, I think the sports thing, another thing is that it teaches you competitiveness. Absolutely. Something that you need. And, and I feel like that's getting lost in this generation of everybody's a winner. And, you know, it's just 
And that, <laughs> and, and that's, Tell them we're losers. Go ahead. That's, <laughs> that's your mental. Bro. You gotta go the seventh it. place trophy. Go Ooh, Lord. That's how they always, you know, it's second place is the first loser. So at the end of the day, you either win or you lose. And that's the hardest. You have some posts this weekend, too. Huh? You have some fire posts this weekend. Appreciate it. Thank you. Yes. Um, but yeah, that's just, you know, one thing you learn in sports is that. There's winners and there's losers. And I think that it's harmful to try to teach kids that everybody's a winner and everybody's equal and ev- because it's not true, right? And once again, going back to the Floyd Mayweather thing, when I saw him running at, a, at 11 o'clock at night in Miami, that's because he wants to win. Not win a fight. He wants to win life. Life. He that he's been fighting since he was six years old. And you can't it's, – it's in your brain to like – you know what I mean? Like Michael Jordan – cheating somebody's grandmother in cards. That's a little extreme, but yeah. that's the kind of mentality that he has and that he still has to this day, which is why he's not not just, you know, successful in basketball, but successful in business and successful in life. Like Kobe Bryant, like all of these people, like you got to have that level of, you know, will to win. And I think that that's something that is lost. I feel like COVID hurt a lot of kids. Yeah. A lot of the generation is soft. It's not it's not as hard as, you know, like other generations were like, we living in a softer time now. Yeah. Like, and, um, Soft life? I mean, <laughs> <laughs> True. So it's like, you know, that that's one of these things. I just yeah. feel like, you know, and other countries like China's competitive. They teaching their kids to be competitive. They teaching them like be dominant. Yeah. Like China comes first. Like you got to have a, a pride in what you're doing. And, you know, like this is, what patriotism means for your country and be an advocate and like, you know, you, you want to be the best in industry. And you, you, you know, if you get a B on your report card, that's not okay. Like, you know, so there's certain things I just yeah. feel like, you know, in America and in this generation now, um, with children is, it's harmful to, to kind of be too, too lenient, too soft, yeah. too complacent. Just let, you know what I mean? Like, that's not something that's not how life is. Life is challenging. Life is hard. It's ups and downs in life. So when you get hit with challenges, like you got to be able to, you know, have enough composure to come out on the other side of it. So you know what else is not acceptable? Finishing fourth place in the World Cup of Basketball. Unacceptable. World champions are what? Unacceptable. <laughs> well, that won't happen next year. They already said Ooh, they, they say Brian got in that line so fast. Shout out to Dennis Schroeder in Germany. KD and Steph Curry. <laughs> Reinforcing really? on the way. It's ridiculous. That's the rule with Braun, Steph, Steph Curry, and KD. They all going to play next Let year. Dylan Brooks drop 40 on us. That's insane. <laughs> Shanghai that what? crazy. That's play a the, wild headline. Play the game to win. Play yep. the game to win. Fourth place, guys. Thanks. You don't play You, you don't play the game to lose. You play the game to win. Well, why do you think we, we start taking things for granted? Like, so of course, when we was kids, everything was so I don't uh, Say it. I think the internet, too, though. Like, social media is the gift and the curse. And we didn't have social media. We didn't have, you know, so it's different. Like, you know, uh, yeah. it's just different. Kids are growing up different. Like, you don't, you don't have to do a variety of different things that you had to do previously. Like, if you want to talk to a girl, you can just go in and DM. There's no emotional attachment to that. There's no, you have to have a certain amount of courage to overcome your fear. To yeah. speak to somebody now, you don't have to do that. Same thing if you want to just disrespect somebody online. You don't have to have a, you gotta have enough courage to go to somebody's face and say something crazy to them. Probably won't happen in real life, but you can say anything yeah. on social media. Um, but it also gives a certain level of comfort. Like when we wanted to see something, like I wanted to see something, I had to actually go take the train and see something. If I wanted to see a basketball game, I had to actually go and see that basketball game. Well, now you can uh, see the highlights on. TikTok, or you can see the highlights on YouTube, or you can stream it on Instagram yeah. where you feel like you're there, but you don't. So it's like, it's just different. Like, you know what I mean? Like, it's, I feel like technology is definitely beneficial for sure, but it's also caused a lot of it's isolated us. Complacency. complacency. It's, it, yeah. it caused a lot of complacency. And, you know, it's like, I'm good. Like, I got my phone, I got my, my chips, and I'm good for, and, for and, hours yeah. at a time. And I got my PS5. I'm good. I'm lit. I told you, like, we, it was a thing, like, the online gaming was. Get on your bike and go down to your man's house and play him. And we're not leaving until somebody's upset, either because I beat you so many times. And you break you, their you, controller. Yo. I'm breaking your controller and I'm coming back next until yeah. we get this right. 
Yeah. That doesn't happen. Our kids won't go outside. They don't want to cross the street. They don't ride their bikes. They're not out. It's just not social media and online technology has isolated us to a point where mm -hmm. we're by ourselves. And I mean, I don't want to explain the stream because there are kids, like I said, like my son, he has a bunch of friends. They actually, it's the same pattern that I actually did. It was kind of weird looking at it. It's kind of crazy, but he does the same thing. He goes to the same basketball court and they, I watch them. It's the same kids. That's then they tough. go to the center afterwards. So there is still kids that are going outside. But not as much. It's not as much. It's not as much. If, if there's five kids on the basketball court, it used to be 20. We used to have to. There are no outside. Wait basketball games. Like, there's no wait. There's no wait time. Like now you, you could just play. Like there's no like I, I gotta yeah. earn, I gotta yeah. earn my way on the court. I gotta wait. If I if I lose, I might not play for three hours. Like yeah. I got next is not now. Happening. It's just like yo, all right, you might have three. You'd players. be lucky for seven people to be out there. Nah, for sure, three on three, two on two. Like you can't yeah. like run it. You don't got enough for five on five. Yeah, not happening. So, but the I don't know. Frustration playing on laziness is crazy. I don't know how we change it. I feel like it's it's you know you. You can't fight the you can't fight the time, you know. I don't want to yeah. be one of these people that's just like in my day, da da da, da like well, this, this this the day and age that we live in. It's only going to get worse. Yeah. That's the scary part about it. It's only going to get worse. Like isolation, mental health is something that's extremely important to pandemic has helped has accelerated that as well. That's what I'm as saying. far as the, the isolation and part. It's only going to get worse. Yeah. yeah. Um, so you know, I feel like um we have to make the most out yeah. of out of the situation that we're given, but you gotta be careful because um it's it's very easy to just fall into isolation and depression and you know let yourself and criticizing go. others that are doing the doers. Yeah, well that comes with it. That comes with shout it. out to the doers. But at the end of the day, if you want to get out the house, you can go to Market Mondays. Oh, segue guy. In Chicago. Has anybody ever told you you should do this for a living? <laughs> <laughs> and if you really want to experience life, meet us in the motherland. Yeah. Yes. December 27th. Ghana. Find a way. Sometimes in life, you just got to find Figure it out. Find a way. I'm not sure how you get there. I'm not sure. I can't tell you that. I will tell you that it will be a life changing experience for you. If you've never been to Africa, it's something that you have to experience in your lifetime. Mm -hmm. And there's tremendous opportunities. We've been talking about Africa so much. We just had the episode with Akon. Why not just, you know, experience the continent for yourself? Come mm -hmm. into the year, vibes. A lot of foreigners will be there. So, you know, I'm sure you'll probably know some people that'll be there anyway. So yeah. maybe you can crash out with one of your friends at their hotel rooms. I don't know. But um, Afro Future Music Festival, Market Mondays Live. Vibes, it's it's yes. just right everybody's on. gonna be there, all the celebrities, everything. So, um, yeah, yeah, it's, 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 it's important to be there because sometimes the only way you're gonna be able to do business is to show up in person. That people may have been following you, may not know you, but you may get a chance to shoot your shot business wise for five minutes and something may come of it. You can't do everything online, going back to going outside. Like you cannot just sit in the house and hope that all this money comes your way. We are outside. So the great thing is, like the last time we was in Africa, we went to Nigeria and we did a networking event in Nigeria, which had to get rescheduled like three times because the first place wasn't big enough, then it would rain, and it was a whole thing. But we finally did the networking event in Nigeria, and this was like two years ago. And um, I met somebody from Liberia that came to Nigeria just to meet us for the networking event. And he was telling me his story and he said his favorite episode ever of Earn Your Leisure was Nacho Banger, my boy from gotcha. Baltimore. So it's just crazy that Sauce. somebody from <laughs> East Baltimore yeah. had an impact on somebody from the West Coast of Africa who yeah. came from another country in Africa to meet us while we were in Africa it's actually pretty mind blowing. So, um, shout out to Nacho Banger. The yeah. impact, the <laughs> impact is real. I would encourage everybody to go. Man, we had a great time last time we was there. We went to Nigeria, went to Egypt. This time we're going to a different country. Obviously, we're going to Ghana. So, we are spreading ourselves out all over the continent. And um, yeah, it's something that, to look forward to. In Chicago, you already know the vibes. We haven't never done a show in Chicago ever. Yeah, One of right. you know the third biggest city. In America, um, the Windy City, always good vibes every time we can go there. You know, we just got a lot of shout out to Ross Mag, shout out to Dre, shout out to 95 yeah. Millionaire, 
Um, you know, we got a strong group of, of solid people there. I'm sure we'll probably be at the Soho House afterwards. Soho House vibes. Shout out to Chance the Rapper. Shout out to Vic Mensa. Shout out to all of our friends. We know some guys. I mean, we really know some guys. We know a lot. We know some guys, yeah. So Shot Town. Shot Town's always been good to us. Um, G Herbo. Shout out to G Herbo. Shout out to Ari. She's from Chicago also. Yeah. Yeah. So um, you know, it's it's one of these things, man. If you want to get out the house, this is this is the opportunity. Yeah. 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 Yeah, happy uh happy belated to my nephew. It was his birthday last week. We got to mention it. Happy birthday to him. Shout out to Angela Yee <laughs> and the whole team at the at, uh way up with Angela Yee. Shout out to uh, the Netflix team and uh the Top Boy team in Spring Hill for inviting us. That was dope. We had a nice dinner with them. Yes. And Fashion Bomb Daily. We appreciate y'all showing love and having yes. a nice it was incredible. Uh Nene Leaks was there. Shout out to her. We had a great conversation. And uh Misa Hilton, just a legend in fashion. We got to chop yes. it up with her. And uh, we got the patron at our boy Don Q's uh, wow. restaurant. Shout out, shout out to Brooklyn Chop House. That's that's the home base. Yeah, y'all been making y'all rounds, man. I'm um, Don Pooh. I said Don Q. Don, Don Pooh. Yeah. Shout out to yeah. Don Q Two Bronx. Yeah, yeah. Shout out to Don Pooh. Yeah, uh, unofficial member of the yeah. EYL travel Brooklyn team. Chop House. You might catch us there any any given day of the week. You never know. Have a hundred dollar date there. Um, <laughs> it's gonna be tough. STK, man. y'all drop nah. the ball, boy. Drop, boy. They, 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 they ain't reach out. Sales ain't been hitting the same. We're taking our town. Something to look like Salt Bay in there. <laughs> STK looking like Denny's these days. For real, huh? yeah. Finito, <laughs> come out for Nito, my friend. But me amigo, boy, muerta. Who's over with? Y'all got about three more years. Mm hmm. See, the quality got to upgrade. Uh, that's a fact. Yeah, that's a fact. Well, so. it's been real, ladies and gentlemen. Market Monday is another glorious Monday. Make sure you check the episode out tomorrow. Make sure you check Oasis premiere. Yes, um, this Wednesday at eight o'clock. Um, and once again, Charlotte, North Carolina, we will be in your area this weekend. So holla at us. And um, once again, congratulations to the boy Diddy, man. Love lifetime achievement award. Definitely uh, well deserved for sure. Yes. Overdue. He has a Hollywood Walk of Fame star, right? He should. That's a good question. Let's you know what? Right now. He I got it. Right he I gotta don't think one. so. He got to have one. Did he got to have one? That's, Look, that's, Tupac just got one. Yeah, that, that is true. Yeah, but did he still live? And did he even doing this for? Yeah, he, yeah, he, he should have had one. He got one. He got one. Did he got one? So, oh, he has one. Okay. Yeah, yeah. How about to say they don't got Diddy one? That's yeah, crazy. He got it in two thousand eight. Um, really? Okay. Yeah, it's been a minute. Um, yeah. but yeah, shout out to Diddy, and uh, yeah, man. Um, yeah. Uh, well, so they did the overhead NFL Super Bowl Zoom cam on y'all. Like, what, what was the look? <laughs> <laughs> Mike, Mike B, I need yeah. some. Stay tuned. I need some emergency. Yeah. Look, look, look here. Emergency. Giants fans. Forty to Listen, zero. Look right here, Giants fans. Dallas Cowboys. Wow. Hold your head. Garrison. That's ugly. 40 spot. Who, wait, who who you rocking with this year? Me? Yeah, you got a team? I'm rocking with us. <laughs> you got a team? I you know my team. That doesn't who's your team? The Jets? Oh, 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 you said it doesn't change. It definitely changes. Who's your team? The Chiefs. <laughs> I think mean, you're a Bengals fan. Hold on, wait. <laughs> I mean, yeah, this Chiefs. guy is crazy. All right, so it's the Chiefs. All right, we go, we go with that. Okay. Chiefs fans since I was a kid, man. Okay, that's, we had we've not, all had teams when we were kids. But... Got you. <laughs> But um, Deion Sanders, Colorado is my team, actually. And, and, yeah. and the That's your team? Sport, the world of sports. That's my Starting now. Yeah. Hasn't been always your team. No, of course not. Once Deion got there. Yeah. Yeah, I'm just a, I'm, I'm just a different type of sports fanatic. I'm, I'm a loyal to my guys, my teams. That's hate. <laughs> <laughs> What's up, <of> Shane? <laughs> <laughs> it's crazy because we said I, that's you though. We was we was watching uh we was watching uh it is what it is and Ken was talking to me like how you just go roll with any team that's winning or any that, that's team? crazy when people do that though. That's crazy. That's crazy. Shout out to all my Cleveland Browns fans. Put Browns in chat. You a Browns fan? I uh, know I said to shout out to Cleveland Browns fan. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. No, I like winning. You crazy. So, so who you rocking with? You, you a Chiefs fan too? No, I'm just, I'm just ch for the couple of people I know in the NFL. Shout out to them, but I don't have I don't have a team. Ian Dunlap is a Colts fan. No, I'm not. By because, because the Northwest Indiana, we got Chicago programming, so I never. All right, was so, a Colts fan. All right so you're a Bears fan. 
Chicago. Misery. I like winning. <laughs> the Bears. <laughs> hey, Russell Wilson, you better step your game up quick kissing babies. Are you going to Yo, be playing at Soldier Field no, next year? Uh, listen, when you get a chance, I want Seahouse you to watch. prayer did not include Chicago. Go watch AB on It Is What It Is. And he does a play-by-play a -play on, on what he thinks about Russell Wilson. Classic. Really? Classic. That that Colorado gas, that Denver pack. <laughs> Hold your head. Hold your head. Hold your head. Boy, hey, I can love y'all. Go pick up the album. Love LP. Love.